We're going to be taking a look at state and react. So this is something that allows you to store values that change over time. So to show how this works, we're going to be creating a new component and I'm going to call it counter.js. So this is something where I want to show a number and then have a button that I can click on and increase the counter. So I'm going to copy my header over here and paste it into counter. And now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the logo and I'm going to remove all this stuff inside of there and just have a div. And then I'm going to rename this to counter. All right. So now what I want this to do is I would like to display the count. And then right here, I'd like to display one. Um, and then I want to have a button. And what this button does is it increments the count. So whenever the user clicks on this button, this becomes a two and then it becomes a three and then so on. So the way you can do this is by using state and react. So I can use the constructor. So this is the constructor of the class and I can say super. So whenever you use the constructor, you need to say super on the props. Um, and here is the props that the user gets. So um, before in a render function, we've done this dot props to access things. Um, this is that same object, but it's passed as a parameter. So now I can create something called this.state. So this is going to be an object, and I'm going to say the count is zero. So now this is something I can use this.state.count and display it right here. So now I can't just say this.state.count, right? Because that's not going to actually render um, this.state.count. It's just going to render the text. So if I come over here, Let's go ahead and render this. So I'm going to say counter from components counter and let's get rid of this body and replace it with a counter. All right, so now we can see our component here. So, so far we have a count and then we are displaying the wrong thing here. So really what I want to display is the value of it. So right now the count is zero. So when this component is first created, we so in the constructor it's the constructor is going to be called when the components first created and it's going to initialize the state to a value of zero or at least the count so we can store many things in this state right now we're only storing the count and it's going to be zero so this dot state dot count to start off with is zero and that's what we're displaying here so now what we want to do is we want to somehow uh, click on this button and increase the count so to do this we can listen for clicks by using uh, a prop called on click on this button. So I'm going to say create a function up here called uh, handle button click. And now you'll notice me do something here. So this is how I'm creating this function. Um, and I'm going to talk about why I'm creating it like this versus like this in a second. Um, but first I want to show you guys a little trick and actually we can we can use this method for now since this is what I've been using before um, So what if I want to see um, Some log statements if I want to print some values, so I'm gonna say This dot handle button click so now I'm passing this function. I have right here um, to this on click and So I can say console.log button clicked so in JavaScript and React, the way you can log things is through console.log. And I can see the log by right-clicking in Chrome and saying inspect. And then the thing that I want to go to is the console tab. And now I can see this tab right here. So if I click increment, and I'm just going to clear it. If I click increment, I can see it says button clicked over here. Um, and so every time I click this button, this function is run. So now what I want to do is I want to say this.state.count and increment it. Now, if I console.log this.state um, in here, you'll notice something interesting. So let's clear it. And that is we get an error. If we were to even just go back further and just console log what the value of this is, um, you'll notice that it is undefined. So we have to bind this function to be able to access this property. And a shortcut to binding it is by doing it like this. So you'll notice we say handle button is equal to, and then this is just a lambda function right here. So now I can say console.log this. 
Um, and if I click on increment, you'll notice we actually have stuff. And if I say this.state, and I hit increment, we can actually see what the value of the state is. So we can see the count is zero. So we have access to that value here. Um, and so you'll oftentimes, if you get an error saying like when you're doing this dot state and it says that it's undefined, it usually means you need to bind it. And so you want to do this to your function. Um, all right, so that's that. Uh, so the state value we want to increment. Now we don't want to just say this dot count plus equal one. So this would be mutating this value and incrementing it. So in React, you don't want to do that. The way you want to do it is by calling a function called this.setState. And how this function works is it takes, well, there's multiple ways you can call this function, but the way we're going to use right now is you pass it an object, and this is the uh, new state. So here I want to pass in a new value of count. So I'm going to say count, and I'm going to say it's equal to this.state.count plus 1. So whenever we call this this.state function, it's going to do two things. The first is it's going to uh, set the new state. So in this case, it's going to increase the count by one. And then after that, it's going to call the render function again. It's going to re-render the component. And when it re-renders the component, the value of state has increased. So it's going to render this JSX with an increased count. So now when I click this button, we can see it now increments exactly how we want to. So perfect. And by the way, uh, we can we can add a decrement button as well. So I would recommend you guys trying this on your own first, but it's going to be very simple to do as we already have this right here. So I can create another button called decrement. And I want to just handle button click two. And over here, I want to do the same thing as that, but now I'm subtracting one. So now we have two handlers, handle button click one, and handle button click two, and maybe we want to rename this to increment and decrement because that makes more sense. So on click, we want to increment and then we want to decrement. So I can increment here and then I can decrement it and we can even go into negative values. So now every time I click this button, I'm clicking it pretty fast, but every time I click that, it's increasing the value and it's re-rendering. And so this render function is called every single time. So I can console log this and I can say render function called. And we can actually see that being uh, re-rendered. So notice every time I click it, the value just increases or I decrement each time it increases. So every time we're just calling a render function again uh, with a new value of this.state.count. So that is a basic uh, usage of this.state. A few things. So this is one thing that a class component can do that a function cannot. So the function over here, this is what we use for our body components. These guys cannot have state. So I can add state to my header because it's a class, but I can't add it to body. The other thing is, uh, notice we're not doing anything in the constructor except for initializing this dot state. Um, if that's the case, you don't actually have to use a constructor. So I can actually remove this and say just state like that, and that'll be a, the equivalent. So this will initialize the state with a count of zero at the very beginning. And I'm gonna get rid of this log statement here. Um, and you'll notice it works exactly the same. The count starts at zero, and, and we can play with the initial value if we wanted to. So I'm now gonna say it's 100, and we can see it starts at 100. So that is something you can do. You can either add it in the constructor or add it here. I'll usually just add the state like this right here. Um, if there's something I want to do in the constructor, so the reason why you would do the constructor, let's add it back, um, is if you want to do it based on the prop. So maybe I want to uh, pass in the initial count value. So I'm going to say props.initialCount. So now in my app over here, uh, I have a counter. I'm going to say initial count is equal to zero. So now I see the count is zero, but maybe I want two counters and I want this one to start at 10. Um, so now this counter starts at zero and I can increment decrement and this counter starts at 10 and I can increment decrement as we could before. Uh, so the only difference is now my counter, the state that it starts with depends on the prop passed in. Um, so if that's the case, then I use the constructor. Otherwise I will just use this.state 
and you don't have to use this out here. I'll just initialize the state there. So that is a beginner introduction into how state works. We're going to be doing a few more videos on state because you can do a lot of cool stuff with this and it's very important to know.